Big B's Daily Vlogs. All right, another episode of the Daily Podcast with me, Eric B. For you guys who are watching on YouTube, thank you guys for jumping on YouTube. But I got a special show for you guys today. It's a Father's Day special. And what makes it more unique and what makes it more special is because I have a father and daughter coming on shortly. So as we do in all my podcasts and all my vlogs, we'll talk about this on the other side of the break. So let's get this started. Welcome everyone, it's the Daily Podcast and the Daily Vlogs. We got two going on today. If you guys want to listen to me on my podcast, you can follow my podcast channel on all podcast platforms, Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon, it's all available there. But today is a special show. I have two, two, not one, but two Boscos coming on the show with me. I have Derek Bosco, who just recently played in the Obi-Wan series on Disney Plus, and her daughter, Ella J. Bosco, who's joining us. And hopefully we can get her to sing. She has a very, very beautiful voice. I was going to say angelic. I don't even know if that's a word. Angelic voice, angel voice, angel sounding voice. But she's going to be on the show. She's going to, they're both going to talk about their careers, where their career is headed, what their career is going. We're going to talk about the Obi-Wan. We're going to talk about the fa- fabulous Filipino brothers as well. So let's go ahead and get them on right now. I have two, two Boscos in hand. It's Derek and Ella J. Bosco. Let's give them a round of applause, guys. Hey, guys. All right. If you guys don't know Derek Bosco, the fabulous, one of the fabulous Filipino brothers with his daughter, Ella J., musician, also an artist, also an actress. Thank you guys for being on the show. Thank you for having us, Eric. Oh, man, you guys are busy. If you guys you guys who are watching or listening don't know, we, me and Derek's been talking for about two weeks now trying to get a date planned and this is going to happen it's going to happen just to land right perfectly on father's day so this is a special father's day podcast slash vlog for you guys and hopefully we can entice ella to sing a little bit before the end of the show just a little bit we'll see we'll see we'll see how she goes but derek man thank you for being on ella thank you for being on we'll start over with derek talk about his acting career we saw him most recently the Obi-Wan special or the Obi-Wan series. And when I saw that episode, I was like, wait a minute. That's a Filipino guy playing playing a bartender in a saloon. And it just happened to be Derek. There's Filipinos in the Star Wars canon. And uh, I'm the new owner of the saloon on Tatooine, uh, which was a surprise to me because, you know, when you audition, they don't tell you what it is. And they didn't tell me what it was until I went for my fitting. Then they turned all the boards around and they're like, you're the new saloon owner. And I was like, ah, I was like total fanboying, but I, I was, I kept it cool, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right. As long as I'm, and then I asked, do I have to wear one of those masks? And they go, no, you're a humanoid. And I was like, great. Nice. How was that for you? I mean, we, I mean, you and I are pretty much the same age. We grew up in the era of, you know, 1977 Star Wars being released for the first time. You grew up in Pittsburgh, California. I'm across the bay in San Francisco. So when Star Wars first came out in 77, it was a big thing for us. It was a new genre for us we're like whoa wait a minute this is something that we've never seen before and then for you you know 40 years 30 years later finally to to be on a star wars episode how did that feel for you oh man that it really was a dream come true you know you you see those things as a child and you never think oh i'm going to be a part of that and then i was actually a part of it and you know on on set you couldn't have your camera you couldn't have your phones no pictures so i was just touching everything i was like oh is that a lightsaber can i hold it and i'd play with everyone's lightsaber i'd play with everyone's um whatever toys they had i see characters in animatronics i mean it was like being at disneyland you know what i mean i'm like what does your character do you know show me how the head moves and they're like oh look snot comes out and i was just i was just blown away by everything you know wow i made it cool and you were representing the filipinos that's what the cool thing was i was like that's a filipino and he's on he's in Star Wars. And that's I think you're the first Filipino I've seen in Star Wars throughout these whole, you know, Boba Fett, Mandalorian. Correct there, me if I'm wrong. Some, Mandal- Mandalorian, Eugene Cordero. Oh, that's right. Eugene Cordero's on there. there. And I heard there's like two other Filipinos aside from the Ewoks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
there's, there's a couple of, yeah, <laughs> that's a Tagalog Ewok speaking. That's so funny, man. But thank, I mean, that was cool. I mean, to see you on there and to see you, you know, represent and, and hopefully you get to reprise your role. Hopefully they end the series. And I know, you know what happened. I know you can't tell us, but I'm hoping they end the season with you back in Tatooine, you know, maybe Obi-Wan grabbing a drink. Or I don't know, something. <laughs> I'm pulling here. I'm pulling here. <laughs> yeah. We we signed like a extensive NDA. Man, it was so hard to keep a secret. Yeah, I know. You know, <laughs> and people were like, how come we didn't tell me? I was like, I couldn't. I couldn't tell yeah. anyone. Yeah, I couldn't tell you till you saw me on TV with that with that knife close to my face right there. <laughs> exactly. How was it growing up in the Bay? Um, you know, you growing up in the Bay with your brothers growing up in the Bay. And back then when we grew up here in the area, especially in Pittsburgh, California, Filipinos weren't really known to be outside of Daly City. So for you guys to be oh. in Pittsburgh, how was that for you guys? Uh, to us, Pittsburgh was our Daly City. We didn't know what Daly City was because wow. we never really went out of our community. Our community was predominantly Filipino, Italian, uh, Mexican, and Black. So like my uh, uncle across the street, he was the mayor of the town. My Ninong was a firefighter. Uh, someone else was a policeman. So, you know, all the people that were in the town were uh, of people of color and were Filipino. Wow. So we didn't know any different. Yeah. So, wow. So you guys were the Philippine, you were the daily city of, of what is that? The East Bay? Is that considered the East Bay? Or is that? East Bay. East Bay. East Bay. Yeah. East Bay. Wow. Wow. It's funny because yeah. I never really heard of Pittsburgh until I want to say like I got to high school. That was like in the mid eighties when the mm-hmm. kid came to school and was like, Hey, why are you always late? He's like, hey, I come from Pittsburgh. And I'm like, Pennsylvania. He's like, no, California. I was like, well, there's no Pittsburgh, California. Then he started naming all these cities. You know, you know where Concord is. Yeah. You know where Brentwood is. Yeah. We go cherry picking at Brentwood every, every, every summer. He's like, yeah. Oh, well, we love cherry picking. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So they're like, yeah, Pittsburgh is by there. I'm like, Oh damn, that's that far. Man. Yeah, when the Steel Towns decided to come out west, um, they named it Pittsburgh, but they dropped the H. Oh, okay. So there's a, there's a difference in spelling. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's switch over to Ella. Ella, music. I was yeah. listening to your single, uh, Bubble Ta- Bubble Test, or is it? Bubble, Bubble tea. tea. Bubble Tea. Bubble Tea. Is that anything near Boba? Yeah. So um, a lot of people don't know this, but boba, like the words boba and bubble tea are interchangeable. So some people call it bubble tea. Okay. Um, and for the song, I thought it would be uh, a nicer sounding like s- thing to say while singing the song. Yeah. We have Boba Friday at work every Friday. And from now on, whenever we get our bobas, we're, I'm going to play your single. So that way everybody can hear it. I'm going to say, this is the new nice. single for Bobo Friday. We're going to play bubble tea. So you guys, and it's funny because we were listening, someone was listening to your song at work one day. And this is right when I was getting Derek trying to get, reach you out on Instagram. And then I said, yeah, I'm trying to get this guy, Derek Bosco. He's like, you know, I just saw him on Boba Fett. I mean, uh, uh, Obi-Wan and he's, he's the fabulous Filipino brother. And then she goes, is she, re- is he related to, Ella J. Bosco. She was looking at your Instagram and she was listening to your music. And I was like, I don't know. That's a good way to find out. So we put two and two together and we realized, okay, I said the Boscos are big, so they're definitely related. So we don't know if you guys are a father daughter, you know, maybe that's your niece, but then come to find out it's your daughter, which is cool. Um, how did you get into music, Ella? Um, well, growing up, I was always surrounded by it. And I think, um, you know, the influence of my aunt and my older brother and all of these things. But I really just always loved music. I was always like in vocal workshop, in the choirs. Um, and I started playing ukulele at a young age. And I think that's what really hooked me into uh, getting into music and playing. So after I started playing ukulele, I then went to guitar and piano. And yeah, I really I really just love music. It's a really good passion of mine. Derek, did you make her do piano lessons as a kid? Because all Filipinos, we had, to, <laughs> we had to do piano lessons. Even though I hated it, I had to do piano lessons. I was forced to a little bit. Yeah. She did. She took it for like four years. And then she asked to stop. And I was like, okay, but that's the base of all her musicality. And she yes. goes back to it all the time. Like she'll play on the guitar and then work out the chords and then go to the piano and then some songs she writes on the piano. Nice. And, and it's funny. I have, um, I have three other kids. Um, two of them are in the band with her. One plays the drums and the other plays the bass. Nice. 
reminds me of the movie Selena, right? When the whole family was involved in music, right? Very similar. Ella, do you play by ear or do you read notes? Because a lot of Filipinos, we all play by ear, so... Yeah, I do play by ear a lot. I mean, I can read tabatures and I can barely read sheet music, but I do a lot of uh, playing by ear, just looking at chords. And so stuff. that's cool. So you can pick up pretty much any instrument and just listen to the music and play it, right? Kind of, yeah. It's a skill that I've been trying to work on, but yeah. I have an uncle lives out in Sacramento. He's Filipino, of course, plays by ear, and he goes, give me any instrument and I'll play it by ear. So one day we took him on it. We, we brought him a trumpet. We brought him a clarinet. And my cousin brought him a saxophone. And sure enough, he couldn't play those instruments by ear. <laughs> <laughs> we can't play those. Can't I, said, play I, those. Said, I said, gotcha. Guitar, ukulele, and piano. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's cool, though. I love that. I love hearing people, especially, you know, female singers who, when I hear an acoustic singer, especially it's a female singer, especially it's a Filipina singer, and you're singing acoustic, to me, that's like, that's super talented right there. And, you know, I'm glad you're representing the Filipinas here and all the young Filipinos who think they can't, you know, just, again, follow her music on Apple Music and Spotify. She's everywhere and I love it. Bubble tea, that's going to be that's going to be my 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 morning ringtone when I wake up in the morning, just so I can be, get it, be inspired instead of coffee. I think I'm going to drink boba in the morning. <laughs> Derek, how did you get into acting? You got, you're a full family of actors. I mean, you know, everybody knows um, Dante. Um, you know, Dante is he? He's which child? Is he the third? The third child? He's the third. It's okay. it's me, and then my brother Darian Bosco, who was in the movie Chavez. He was also in Debut. He played Augusto, Augusto. and then my brother Dante Bosco, who's mo uh, most known for Hook, and he's the one who directed. Directed, uh, fabulous Filipino brothers and then my younger brother Dionisio Bosco who was on City Guys for five years and then we have a little sister named Ariana Bosco um, and she runs the Palms Up Academy the poetry stuff uh, but my mother without realizing it she was uh, raising us as artists uh, in Pittsburgh at our local Phil Am she had us in uh, Kaju Kimball class with Uncle Willie we had tap dancing class we had piano last class we had voice class Wow. We had jazz class. We had all these things. So then when breakdancing came out, we were kind of naturals, yeah, you yeah. know, with the martial arts and the dancing. And then we became one of the Bay Area's uh, top 10 groups. We got scholarships to the San Francisco Ballet Company. And then and we danced at all the local venues, you know, uh, the 49ers games, wow. the Oakland A's games, the Giants games. We did all of that. And then someone said, you got to move to Los Angeles. And we moved to Los Angeles as dancers and then people are like dancers no you need to get into acting yeah and so we moved down to los angeles in 1985 nice 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 how in the fabulous filipino brothers that re that was a cool storyline and that you know dante who directed it did everything right the right way represented the filipinos the right way you know they showed us the filipino lifestyle you know the whole food the whole everything your backstories on that how true was that when it came to the storyline, was it, you know, was it pretty much the way you guys are outside of the movie? Well, it's funny. People watch the movie and they go, man, I felt like I was at a house party yeah. watching you guys, you know, and some of that is, you know, and us being brothers and real family with my mom and my dad, a lot of that chemistry is already there. Um, the stories that are told there, um, it's based on true stories, but they're all interwoven. So something that may have been like, uh, my real dad's story is now uh, my brother's story and something that happened to my uncle maybe happened to one, someone else. So like, for instance, the, my whole thing with a chicken, Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> growing up, we had chickens and we had roosters and we'd have to get the eggs every day. And one day we got a complaint because the rooster was keeping everyone awake. So my grandfather tied the rooster up with the neck and he made me hold it. And he, and he um, slaughtered it, but he did it very slowly with wow. like a dull knife. And I had to hold it over a bucket, a, a, over a thing of rice that he cooked. And then the chicken ran around and I had to chase the chicken. So that's where that story <laughs> came from. That, I mean, you know, for a lot of, a lot of my friends who are non-Filipino who, who watched the movie and I encouraged them to watch the movie, they were like, is that real in the Filipino culture? And I'm like, in the motherland, I know that's real. 
And I know if you go deeper down in, you know, the, the country parts of California, I know there's still a lot of chicken fighting going on. I said, but I don't know if that's happening like in the Bay. I go, it could, but we just don't know that it's happening. Um, but it's cool. I, I definitely enjoy the film. I, I watched, I had my boys watch it and they were just like, is that what you were doing growing up? You know, is that how things were for you guys growing up? I'm like, yeah, you can. I mean, the Filipino party, the food that you guys had, everything, but except for that one scene when your brother was messing with the food with the, with the other girl. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's something. If we did that, Lola would have been pissed off at us for touching the food like that. <laughs> but, you know, you always have one relative or uncle yeah. or, you know, that, that crazy uncle. And, and, and Dion really embodied it. And he, he made that, that part of the movie light and uplifting before it got like heavy. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it was, it was a cool, it was a cool scene. I, I just, I was laughing. I was laughing the whole, the whole, the whole time. And I'm like, dude, if they slap the pig, that's it. It's over. And they ended up slapping the pig. I'm like, Oh man. Oh man. What was your, um, when you guys grew up, did you guys have a, a, a break dancing name out in Pittsburgh? Yeah, we had a break dancing name. It was called street, but it was spelled like treat. S T R E A T. Okay. Freaks, street freaks. Okay. Yeah. It's funny because I grew up in San Francisco, but I spent a lot of times in Daly City. And Daly City was, you know, that was the the days that SBC got started, Midstar Production got all the DJ crew got started, and every DJ crew had a had a you know uh, breakdancing group, and I was part of DC Dragons, which was Daly City breakdancing group then. And then my San Francisco friends were like, "Hey, what are you doing over there in Daly City?" I'm like, "Well, this is where I hang out. You know, this is where all the Filipinos are." It's like. You know, I grew up in a black neighborhood and it's like, you guys, you guys treat me like we're playing basketball. It's like, you guys won't ever let me dance. It's like, let me get out there and dance. It's like, you guys want to hog the stage. So Daily City was a cool spot. And whenever we wanted to battle, we we're like, oh no, we can't battle these guys in Hercules because we don't know how they are. You know, they're probably better than we are. <laughs> but that was a good, that was a good era. It was a good era. We had a lot of fun battling different groups yeah. and performing in different places. Yeah, it, it, was, it was fun. It was fun till it got bad. So, but it was fun. <laughs> Ella, oh man, it's crazy now. It's crazy the moves that they. Oh, do. Meg, my God! I was watching something on TikTok the other day, and this guy did his neck and his shoulder. Like, I was like, "Whoa! How how are you doing that?" You know, back then it was just the arms and with just the little jiggling. Now you're like messing with with. Oh, man, I can't. I can't even think about doing that. So. <laughs> Um, Ella, what, what got you and who, who inspired you into music? Um, a lot of people, I would say. I think growing up, my family always made sure I was listening to some good music, like you know Adele, Alicia Keys, Beyonce, Amy Winehouse, um, and that kind of inspired me too, and really got me into music. And I think like just constantly being surrounded by it, you know, like every party that we had and. Uh, like, you know, uh, all the family would come over, someone would play guitar, someone would pull up, you know, one of the oldies and we would all just sing and jam out. So I think that's what cultivated my love for music as well. Um, but yeah, just constantly being surrounded by it and like just listening to all these really powerful, strong women uh, in the music industry. Can't be a Filipino party without a karaoke machine. So I'm pretty sure there was always a karaoke machine going around. Everybody trying to score a hundred with that karaoke machine. But Derek, I'm pretty sure you and I grew up the same way where, you know, Ella just, just said, you know, uncles will come out with a guitar and we would just jam around the uncles and start singing. Even though if we can't hold a note, we were singing, right? Yeah. I mean, that's how we grew up. Uh, I remember my auntie Eleanor, my auntie Clark, my uncle Clark, and just a bunch of people. And then someone would bring a keyboard and we would just play music and sing. And that's how we are now too. It's yeah. like, you know, we have our own live karaoke. We yeah, can take yeah. it anywhere. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you know this, but Ella J was the first uh, DC superhero character. Oh, wow. Wait, I did read that somewhere. Explain. Uh, let's go elaborate on that a little bit. Well, yeah. So um, I was in the movie Birds of Prey with okay. Margot Robbie and I played Cassandra Kane, who is um, in the in the Batman family universe sort of thing but I was kind of the apprentice to Harley Quinn in the movie and um, it was really fun because there was a lot of Asian representation you know the the director um, Kathy Yan she was a female Asian American um, the writer was Asian and the DP uh, Maddie Libatique Filipino Filipino wow um, and a lot of the stunt team was Filipino too so Jojo Eusebio yeah, it was a really special one yeah so that's funny so I was on set with her and um uh, Jojo Eusebio, Filipino, 
was the stunt coordinator and he's also a second unit director. So when I showed up to shoot Obi-Wan Kenobi, all you could hear on the walkie talkies was Cassandra Kane's dad is here. Cassandra Kane's oh, wow. dad, Cassandra Kane's dad. Because the camera crew was all Maddie Libetique's uh, camera crew. He was supposed to shoot this, but he had a conflict. So they all knew me and they're all saying, Hey, what's up? What are you doing here? What's going on? And I go, Oh, I'm not a dad today. I'm acting. <laughs> and then yeah. Joe Eusebio, uh, uh, Filipino stunt coordinator was also the second unit director. So after the director, Deborah Chow went to go shoot something else, I had a, a few days working with Jojo. Uh, wow. Which was really fun. Yeah. How was that for you working for working with, with the DCU and, and working with, you know, with Mar uh, DC, the DC universe? It was really cool. There was a lot of cool stuff that we got to experience and see. Um, I met a lot of cool people in, on the way, and we went to a bunch of Comic-Cons and saw a bunch of fans, which was really nice. And just seeing, like, you don't know until you're on that side of it, because just seeing all of this, like, really cool behind-the-scenes stuff is so amazing and eye-opening. Like, you would never know if you weren't um, in the movie or in that sort of um, field. So, yeah, like, we, we went to the... Um, the headquarters for DC and they gave us like a little tour wow. and that was fun. Um, and we saw some stuff that, you know, is super rare or exclusive. And so being a part of it is just super fun. And I'm grateful to have these experiences. Yeah. Oh man. That's, I mean, I'm, you know, I, I lean a lot towards Marvel, but I grew up more of a DC fan, you know, cause back then we had Superman and Batman didn't really know about Marvel till now. But yeah, if I, if you ask me to play any character in DC, I'm like, go ahead you know, do what you got to do to get me on, get me on the DC network. That was cool. That was cool. You know, it's funny. I read that when I was looking up um, your music and I saw that, you know, Ella J, you know, DC character, but I never got to really read into it. I'm going to read into it after we get off, but that was so cool. That's cool. So you guys are kind of like intertwined. You got one that's owned by Disney and the other one that's on, that's in the DC universe. Now we got to have yeah. you guys meet in the middle somewhere, right? Have you guys both be the same the same universe because you know everyone says disney owns everything right it's a matter of time disney's gonna buy everything else so we'll see what happens and that's cool that's cool what's your next what's next for you ella j what's next for you moving forward i know you're doing a lot of singing and a lot of acting are you doing both at the same time yeah well i'm releasing a music video which will come out this friday it's called eye to eye um the song is already released but we're releasing a music video for it which is really exciting directed nice. by um a panai director uh grace evangelista um and i'm also we're unfortunately not in la but we're in atlanta right now because i'm filming a television show for peacock which we can't really talk much about but yeah it's there's so many things going on so we're really excited nice nice and you're so you're trying to do both at the same time derek what's your next plan what's next for you moving forward um, I'm auditioning for a lot of projects, you know, uh, so between producing that and then producing her music, her music videos, and then my other two children, Deuce Bosco, he's a baseball player. We're driving him all over the place. My wife's actually at a baseball game right now. Of course. Uh, and, but he, you know, he's got the drum set and my other daughter, Emerson Bosco is a director. So she has a little film called, can we play that she, wrote and directed uh, at 12 years old. So I'm producing this whole Team Bosco wow. uh, family thing. And, you know, we just keep grinding and try to uh, uh, keep putting a uh, product out there. Wow. So so how important is it? So when you guys grew up, there was five Boscos, right? There was five Boscos growing up. And then now you got the extended Boscos. You got the kids. Now, you're, you know, there's what's what's the total number of Boscos that you can think of that's out there right now? Oh man, too we, many to count. Too many. Okay, <laughs> we have a we have a, a family reunion every summer, and there's it's over a like hundred. Over a hundred. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. So how yeah. important is it? You just mentioned that you're there. You're you're being supportive to your kids. How important is it to you as a dad, to you as a business person, that you have to be supportive with your kids and their dreams of what they want to be? Um, I think it's important for every parent. You know. Yeah. We, at a young age, uh, they tried different things and we were behind it. Like her first thing was violin and it didn't work out, you know, Did not. <laughs> uh, but you know, you just, you keep trying and you yeah. just keep supporting them and then they find something they want to do. And then to the best of the ability, we're, we're going to support it and make it happen. You know, yeah. it just so happens that we're artists, but if one of them wanted to be a, a doctor or a lawyer, 
I mean, I don't, I don't know how to do that because I'm an artist, but Hey, uh, we'll, we'll send you to college and we'll support you anywhere we can, whatever yeah. dreams you have. We're going to uh, try to facilitate that. It's kind of funny. Cause like the Asian stereotype for, for like us Filipinos, at least is like be a doctor, be a nurse, be a lawyer. But I feel like for us, it's like, I was talking to my mom the other day. She was like, I don't even know how to do that. So yeah. do you want to play music? Do you want to like yeah. go through the arts, you know? So oh, it's kind of opposite for our family, but yeah. we so yeah, we so appreciate it. It's funny because I fell into that Filipino stereotype where I'm in the medical field and it wasn't by choice. It was by the whole, I've been doing a lot of different jobs, just trying to, you know, feel out what I wanted to do. But then I saw like, Hey, you know, this medical field's kind of cool. You guys work nine to five, you get the holidays off, you get paid, sick leave so I kind of fell into it you know so I ended up becoming a medical assistant but then after interviewing you know you're probably like my 10th actors that I'm interviewing I've been doing a lot of interviewing with actresses and actors and after interviewing you guys I got that little acting bug and I'm like god I don't I you know I don't want to get into this but then I sat down with my parents, you know, luckily for me, my parents are still around. And of course, what's the first thing my mom says, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to be an actor. Stick to your job. You're getting paid for sure. That's like, mom, I kind of feel like I want to do it. But she's like, no, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. I'm like, geez. So if I wanted to be an actor back then, she would have been like, ah, you're not going to be an actor. You're going to become a doctor. Because they didn't know. Nobody knew it was like a a valid profession or what to do. I mean, you look at Ruby Ibarra, yeah. who Ella did her track Gold with. Um, she, she's a scientist. Yeah. You know, she was helping fight COVID on the front lines while rapping, you know, on the weekends and, and at night, you know. Yeah. She was a rap uh, superhero, you know, as well as being a scientist superhero. Yeah. So, yeah. And the thing about being Filipino, I feel, is that, you know, we do a lot of things, you know, we're multi multi talented. Exactly. You, you, you scratch a Filipino and they sing and play basketball yeah. as well. <laughs> we do. I, I can play basketball. I can't sing though. I can't sing unless, you know, I, I have a lot of drinks in my system and even then I still can't sing. Um, <laughs> growing up in the Bay area, I don't know if you remember, I, you know, it's funny cause my mom always said, you know, I want you to be a doctor, but do you remember KSOL radio station here in the Bay area? So yeah. I was actually, I had a show on there. It was called when we were in San Mateo before we moved to San Francisco, I used to do a show called Turn Off the Lights, and at midnight, I would turn into the Doctor of Love, and I would give my, say, my name the Doctor of Love because, you know, all the love dedications. So I told my mom, there you go, I'm a doctor, just not by trade, just, you know, just on the radio. Hey, I play a doctor on TV. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I play a saloon owner. I play a detective. I play many professions. Whatever you got to do to do it, exactly. Um Ella J, how important is it to you to have your dad there by your side the whole time? Would you have it any other way? I know there's times where I'm pretty sure there's a lot of times where it's like, oh, dad, I don't want you doing this. But at the end, you guys are still together. How important is that to you to have your dad by your side? It's I mean, it's super important. It's like one of the main reasons I have the career that I do today. And um, obviously, because he is my dad and I am his daughter we do have our we have our moments of fighting or um disagreement but i think ultimately like i wouldn't have it any other way because the support and the accessibility i get because of him is so convenient and so amazing and so fulfilling so i think it's like i i appreciate it a lot because a lot of people don't don't have that necessarily um that's that um immense amount of support so Yeah. yeah i love this guy we fight sometimes but I wouldn't have it any other way. And I know this is like the Father's Day special, but her mom, uh, Emily Cho, is a big part of the team as well. Um, My parents in general, yeah. We both, um, she has a good support system, her whole team, from the agents to the managers to, you know, the publicists. Um, It takes a village to uh, put product out there and to continue to work, you know, and, you know, you get your hopes up high, you know, you get auditions, you want things really bad. Yeah. You don't get it, you you know, and then you go, you have to move on to the next. Yeah. You know, so what's great is with the music is we can just keep putting it out there. And, and um, I think what about your Asian-ness that you like to put in the music to represent? Yeah, my culture. And I think that's really important too. And um, making sure that our voices are heard and that we use our platform to, to, to speak out against things like racism and stuff. So. Nice. Nice. You know, I grew up as an advocate of um, Filipinos. And when I grew up in the in the 80s, 
and college in the 90s, you know, we weren't really known as, you know, who the Filipinos are and, you know, what the Filipinos do. We always got that stereotype, well, you guys are rice eaters and the, you know, the bad stereotype was, you know, you guys are dog eaters, right? That's what they, they always told us. But then lately, you know, with all the Filipino representation on TV, on, in the movies, it's becoming more of a big thing. Like, and I love what you guys are doing as a family and what you guys, you know, just from the Boscos in general to you two, what you guys are doing, just representing the Filipinos in the positive way. Like, hey, if we think about it, we can do it. We just have to be motivated to do it. And I love that you guys are doing that. And, you know, for all the Filipinos out there who says, no, I think I better listen to my mom and my dad and follow my dreams. It's more important that you follow the dreams that you guys have. I mean, you guys wouldn't be sitting here today if, you know, someone told you to do something different, right? No, we wouldn't. And, you know, I got to say, my mom, Aida Bosco, she's the one who drove us down to Los Angeles in 1985 to chase a dream. Um, she didn't know what it was, you know. Um, and then she, this was before cell phones and before, um, fax machines. Yeah. She would drive us to and from the city. We lived about, you know, 40 minutes out in a town called Cerritos. She would drive us back and forth, you know, three to five times a day supporting our career. And we wouldn't be where we are without my mom doing that for us. And by her doing that for us, it kind of taught me that the hard work and dedication that it takes and how to be there for my kids. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love how your mom was also in the family of Filipino brothers. Um, it's like, when you guys added her on there, I was like, see, this is what a family is supposed to be about. You add who you really, who, who the family really is there. And it was, it was kind of cool. Did you guys also have other family members besides the siblings that was part of the movie? So that was our real mom. And that was our real dad, Darius. And <clears throat> pretty much almost everyone was like real family. Um, like a lot of the cousins and we had cousins. Yeah. So the original Bosco brothers, uh, my dad and his brothers were in there and our names are, based off of their names okay yeah. they all made cameos um who else uh yeah a lot of our cousins a lot of the cousins the the girls singing um during the performance were they're all related to us they're all filipinos nice um, yeah linnea gabe yeah. and dom bosco yeah. even when even when in the beginning the first scene when um, Uncle Dante, he's coming back from the airport and he's walking through the whole house with all the family like pretty much I like maybe like 90% of everyone who was there was blood related. So wow. they're either blood related or they're like really close family, friends. really close family yeah. friends that we grew up with. They're like from our Philam, like in the Philam. Yeah. That's our actual Philam and all those uh, Manongs and Manongs there, the, the dancers, they were there when we grew up, you know wow, what I mean? Wow. Wow. Uh, my grandparents generation started it and there's a few of them alive, but my mom and my dad, they're, comadres and compadres are all there and they were watching it and they were going wait we know this story yeah but that's not his story that's that story you know yeah yeah so it's a lot of it was very authentic which was fun so that was your real dad he's he's pretty he's pretty fit i was like this guy's pretty <laughs> fit for you know for being a dad i was like whoa wait he a loves, minute he loves golf and he loves all of his sports and activities uh, he, consider, he, considers <laughs> he considers himself the model okay. oh yeah it's funny I was because like, he did go he did some stuff that were on billboards around town for a while. Okay. I was like, I was like, look at him. His, his shirt is all tight. His pecs and shoulders are sticking out. It's, it's like, this is, this is an old guy too. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pops. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was like, I was like, whoa. Okay. That's, that's cool. I love that. I love how the storyline again was implemented. I think if I had to pick the saddest story, I think it would have been Dante's story. Um, the happiest story was your other, the the brother who ended up getting married at the end where the whole movie was around. But Dante's story, that movie, man, I was like, whoa, you know, the girl that you love just got hit by a car. <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's a twist, you know, in movies you want to throw in uh, uh, these moments. They're called like, oh, shit moments, yeah. you know, like, like you didn't see it coming. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So Plot that. Twist. that shocks the audience and that was like a big way to shock the audience and people always ask did she die and we're like mm. sequel <laughs> would have been nice to see a sequel be nice to see another part two with that um um Derek you're on a lot of episodes you were in Hawaii Five O. you were in what what are the, what other stuff you were in you were in um NCIS what's your favorite so far what's your favorite character what's your favorite role 
you've done a lot. So if you had to pick, I would just say one. What's your favorite so far? Um, right now it's it's the Obi Wan Kenobi, only because it's like the freshest. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Uh, even though I didn't get to flush it out as much, I just that's just like a dream come true. Yeah. I mean, prior to that, the other uh, oh, I have another thing coming out. It's called uh, the Maggie Moores, um, and I got a great character in there. And then uh, what was the other one? Uh, Mayor of Kingstown, the Jeremy Renner project. Yes. I, I played a Filipino detective that also spoke Spanish. And um, I, I really enjoyed that because I, I was playing Filipino. Nice. You know, nice. it's rare that we get to play Filipino. You know, it's funny. I had Eugene Cordero on the on the show um, a while back and I was I'm. He humbled me in a way where, you know, I I always said, if I'm going to be a Filipino character and a Filipino person, I want to play a Filipino role. I was so adamant on that. I was like, you know, I, I'm not going to go there and you have me play Spanish or have me play Chinese. I want to play Filipino. And then he humbled me, right? Well, well, how we're doing this right now? He said, yo, Eric, you know, when the audition comes and they say you're playing Spanish or you're playing Chinese, he goes, it's those roles that's going to put food on the table. So you have mm -hmm. kind of have no choice on what you want to do. And I was just like, I never thought of it that way. I thought of it more as like, I want to be a proud Filipino and I want to do this. And he also said, like, if you want to be proud, that's fine. But, you know, proud doesn't pay the bills. I was like, oh, damn. It's like, you know, I was like, you're right. It doesn't. So how important is it to you to play your role as a Filipino character for both of you guys? Um, it's super important. But, you know, what's great is back in the day, like when Dante did Hook, and when my brother Dion did City Guys, they wouldn't let them say that they were Filipino. Yeah. They kept saying, you know, I'm playing it as a Filipino. They go, yeah, I play it as a Filipino. But, you know, too many cultures identify with you. You know, people look at your face and they go, that's me. I'm Mexican. That's me. I'm Puerto Rican. That's me. I'm Japanese. That's me. You know, I'm Vietnamese, whatever it is. So they wanted that amb ambiguity. Ambiguity? Yes. Amb amb so, but, but nowadays, what I really like with like with her generation, people are proud to claim every single ethnicity that they are. Yeah. And the inclusion of all that is is really amazing these days. And, and you know, it's like what Eugene was saying, like you play these roles, but people that watch it that are Filipino and know you're Filipino. Yeah. They claim you. So it doesn't matter whether what role it is. They look at you and they go, he's Filipino. Yeah. He looks like me. Yeah. Like even yeah, like even watching Spider Man and they're throwing Pandasala yeah. uh, at Andrew Garfield and the Lola speaking Tagalog and all of that like, and they're all like, "Thanks, Lola!" Like watching that too and just knowing that they're actually Filipino. Like I felt like like they were like you know honoring it for me personally. You yeah, know, so yeah. seeing all these things and seeing that people can claim that they are Filipino now or Korean or whatever ethnicity they are is really cool and I think it like brings us together more than separates us. Mm. I mean, yeah, well, Filipinos, I think in the next, you know, you know, five years, we're, we're, all, we're on the rise. We're on the rise rapidly on the rise right now. You know, like you just mentioned Ruby with her music career. Um, Fox is doing the cleaning lady and they're kind of representing the Filipinos there as well. So Filipinos are, is going to be on the rise. And, you know, with you guys releasing the fabulous Fi Filipino brothers, Joe Coy doing his Easter Sunday, in a matter of time, you're going to be seeing a lot more Filipinos on TV, I definitely want to see a Filipino show. You know, it would be it would be cool if it was the Bosco Brothers, like on ABC. You know, they're showing things like you know Blackish. They're showing the the one with uh, Randall Park. Um, I forget the name of that show. Um, Fresh off the boat. Fresh off the boat. Well, Joe Coy had a series. It was a pilot, um, and they shot it, and then it didn't work out. So I think they're re uh, redoing it or something. But hopefully, his his show comes out. Nice. Because that was going to be the first Filipino family on prime time. Yeah, that's that's what I'm waiting for. And, and you know, thank you for sharing that. That's that'll be cool to see. But we need more of it. You know, I, I want to see more of it. You know, it's it's cool to see the representation out there, whether it's music, whether it's acting, whether it's just, you know, even we you know, we have Leah Salonga, who's representing the the stage to Broadway part for the Filipinos. You know, she's out there doing her Broadway thing and. And to see you guys on there on the small screen and on the big screen, it's just like, you know, big ups and applause to you guys for doing that. Thank you. I can, you know, it's, I can't wait. I can't wait for your next projects. I can't wait for you guys, what you guys have going on. I can't wait for this show that you're filming, Ella J, to see what's coming out. It's going to be on Peacock. That, you know, can't wait for that. Um, and then moving forward again, you know, hopefully we see you on Obi-Wan again. You know, I know you know what happened, you know, so I know you know. 
if you can tell us, I know you can, but I, I'm hoping these, you know, the last two episodes we watch, we're like, oh, there he is. He's there again. It's funny, all the memes that come out, you know, there's memes where he's uh, asking me where, where the Jedi are. And then someone wrote, mom, sir, this is a Jolly <laughs> <laughs> I, I I saw one. I saw one. I don't know if you saw it. I'm going to look for it. I'm going to share it with you. But I saw one when they said, you know, where are the Jedis? The meme was, I know. Like, what? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Come again? Yeah. So <laughs> hearing those, it's kind of it's kind of cool. And, you know, we can laugh at it because it's funny to us. You know, it's like it's funny that we see that. And it's a cool way to say, hey, at least the Filipinos are getting recognized. So I can't yes. I can't wait for that. Um, Ella, Jay, you feel like doing yeah. a quick quick little tease for us for for a, a, a bubble tea song go grab yes i'm gonna go grab my guitar yeah 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 go. yeah didn't mean to put you on the spot but that's kind of cool i don't know she's happy to she's happy to but again i want to thank you for for jumping on derek you i know you guys got a busy schedule i know you're out there and for you to actually take time with me and sit here and share your story and you know i followed the Bosco brothers since, you know, debut, right. Since you guys did the whole debut scene and then, you know, Dante's career took off, but then it's funny because we knew there was Bosco brothers. We knew there was more than one. And to finally see you guys on big screen and see you guys on the films was kind of a cool, cool thing to have. Thank you. All right, guys, Ella J is going to do a little quick bubble tea for us. You ready? Okay. I'm going to do it. Set. There. Skateboarding in the parking lot You ask me if I'm tired and I tell you that I'm not So we all drive to get down on LA Bubble tea and sushi in the street Black and karaoke in the California heat Our hair blowing on the freeway There's summer days when we belong Riding Her, her music's available on Apple Music, Spotify, also on YouTube. And you did say June 19th, you're releasing a new single on YouTube only. Is that going to be a YouTube exclusive? Oh, we're releasing a music video for Eye to Eye, uh, which uh, features uh, an amazing dancer by the name of Zarek King. Um, he's a ballet protege that's coming up. And we wanted to show that Asian men are sexy too. You know? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Even though we're in our late forties, yes, we are. <laughs> Eric, we want to thank you for having us no, today. No, I want to thank you guys for being on. I want to thank you guys, Ella. Thank you. That's a beautiful voice. I, I cannot wait to hear your the rest of your music moving forward. And you know, every time I hear that voice, I'm gonna be like, "Hey, I know that voice. I spoke to her." And you know, wish you guys nothing but the best in your in your work and in the, um, moving forward. I wish you guys nothing but the best. You know. Your career wise, family wise, I love the whole family tree that's here. I love the whole family bond. It's important to me that family is always involved. And for you mm. guys right there, just the you two showing me right now that it's it's a tight knit and you guys gotta stick close together and that's the way to make it work. But I wanna thank you guys for jumping on. Thank you guys for being here. Again, Derek Bosco and Ella J. Bosco here with me on the daily podcast with me, Eric B. You guys can watch this. It's gonna be on YouTube. Um, it's gonna be a Father's Day special. We're calling it the Father's Day special with the Boscos. And again, thank you guys for being on. Thank you. Hey, I just wanna give a quick shout yes. out to my dad, Darius Bosco. Happy Father's Day. Happy uh, Father's Day to Daryl J. Bosco. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. All uh, the fathers. <laughs> Yes. 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 And to Derek, happy Father's Day to you too. Oh, thank you. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Man, how cool was that? Having both Boscos on here, Derek Bosco and Ella J. Bosco. Her voice, her smooth sounding voice, man. I love that voice. That voice is just so mesmerizing when you hear it. 
But I want to thank them for being on the show. Thank them for jumping on the show. Again, you can follow Ella J's Bosco's music on Apple Music, on Spotify, and YouTube as well. She does have a YouTube channel, Ella J Bosco. Just look her up. For Derek Bosco, you can watch Obi-Wan Season 1, Episode 1. He's there. He's also on the Fabulous Filipino Brothers, which with a lot of other stuff that he's on. But go ahead and follow her. Follow them. Thank you for them for jumping on the show. Thank you for you guys jumping on and listening. Until next time, thank you guys for listening to the podcast. And the vlog has ended. Go in peace. Bubble tea. Bubble bubble tea. I can't sing like her. I'm not even going to try. I'm not going to try. Bubble tea. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to The Daily Podcast with Eric B.